Welcome to KetoMealsAndRecipes.com. Today I'm going to be making my sugar-free gingerbread people cookies, which is a continuation of my 12 treats of Christmas and New Year, recipe number three. In this video, I'll be providing a detailed explanation how to make these cookies nice and crisp and to not have them expand as you're baking them. You'll love these cookies because they taste just like classic homemade old-fashioned gingerbread cookies. In this thumbnail, I have made one gingerbread person to represent each person in my family. Even though my children are young adults now, they will always be my babies. And I had to use the little tiny child size gingerbread cutout because I didn't have any other size for them. And they look really cute. After the cookies are baked, I will also show you how I decorate the cookies and how to use the royal icing effectively for decorations. As always, the link for the printable gingerbread recipe will be posted in the description below. I will also provide a link for any recipe that I mention in this video, so check those out in the description as well. The last FYI, this is a really easy cookie dough to make and fun to decorate. And if you have children or can borrow some, get them involved in this fun activity. So for this recipe, the macronutrient ratio is 3.1 to 1, with 2.7 grams of total carbs, 1.4 grams of dietary fiber, resulting in 1.3 grams of net carbs per the adult sized gingerbread cookie. Now as always, here are a few prep steps. First, line a baking sheet with parchment paper and set the baking sheet aside. Next, prepare and weigh out all your ingredients and make sure that your eggs and butter are at room temperature. So for this recipe, the first thing I'm going to do is combine and then sift all my ingredients through a fine mesh sieve. I begin with the almond flour. Next, I add the coconut flour, the whey protein isolate, and the finely ground salt, the ginger powder, the cinnamon powder, clove powder, my baking powder, and glucomonin powder. Then whisk everything so that it passes through the sieve and then set the bowl aside for a moment. Add the room temperature butter into the mixing bowl and your sugar-free sweetener. As always, I'm using my monk fruit based sweetener, which I have ground to a confectionery powder. Next, place the paddle attachment to your stand mixer. Then turn on your paddle and whip for about two minutes. First it's slow and then when it's integrated at high speed. Now it's time to add the eggs, which you should do one at a time. I don't know if this is absolutely necessary, but I like to whip my eggs before I add them into the butter mixture. And then beat for a minute or so until the first egg is integrated before adding the second egg. Don't forget to stop the machine and scrape down the sides of the bowl at least once or twice. And then keep whipping until the butter is light and fluffy, which should usually take an additional three to five minutes. For this recipe, I'm also using blackstrap molasses because it's the blackstrap molasses that gives these gingerbread cookies their authentic old-fashioned taste and because the blackstrap molasses has several vital minerals. However, as with my gingerbread crinkle cookies, you can omit the blackstrap molasses if you're at all concerned about using this ingredient. But I would like to mention that the carbs for the blackstrap molasses has already been calculated in my macros. I thought I'd mention that just in case you're wondering what the effect would be for each cookie. But whether you add it or not, that's completely up to you. Only add it if you feel comfortable. If you do omit it, the taste will be slightly different, but they'll still be pretty good. Now mix everything, and after adding all the ingredients to this point, you may notice that the mixture looks a bit curdled. But don't worry, it's supposed to look like this at this point. It's time to add the sifted dry ingredients into this bowl. And if you've removed your paddle attachment, put it back on and mix everything to combine well, but don't overmix. Also remember to stop and scrape the bowl to make sure that the butter, which always tends to stick to the side of the bowl, is integrated with the rest of the ingredients. Because this dough is very sticky, I prefer to use cling wrap. It seems to work better than parchment paper or even my silicone mat. So the first thing I do is lay down the cling wrap on my work surface. Then transfer the dough to the center of the cling wrap and shape it into a ball. To make things easier for yourself, divide the dough into two roughly equal parts and set half of the dough aside for a moment. You may remember from my sugar cookies or my Oreo cookies, I like to use a little hack to make my dough an even thickness. This hack is I place two painter sticks, which you can usually get free any place that sells paint if you ask nicely. Or as an alternative, 
I like to use chopsticks. Either of the paint sticks or chopsticks will work really well. And all you have to do is place one on either side of the dough. But make sure the sticks are close enough so that your rolling pin will be able to glide on top of the sticks. Then cover the dough with a second sheet of cling wrap and press to flatten your dough a bit. Then starting in the center of the dough, roll over the dough. If your guide sticks are moving around as you're rolling, just embed the sticks into the dough like this. Then continue rolling until the dough is the same thickness as the paint sticks, which is about one eighth of an inch or three millimeters thick. I like to make my dough into rectangles, so I trim the pointy ends and patch to make a rectangle. Roll over the dough again to ensure even thickness and then remove the paint sticks. But leave the dough covered with the top layer of cling wrap. Then just simply slide the dough rectangles onto your baking sheet and set that aside for a moment. Then repeat the entire process with the dough that you had set aside previously. It's much easier to make the cookie cutouts if your dough is nice and chilled, so place the dough into the fridge for about an hour. To make my cookie family, I'm going to use a male, female, and child cookie cutters. You'll notice these are not super huge. To be most efficient, when you're cutting out the cookies, try to place the shapes that you can get the most number of cutouts and leave the least leftover dough. After you've done the cutout, you'll notice that if your dough is cold, you can very easily pick up the cutouts and place them on a parchment lined baking sheet. However, if while you're working with this dough, if it gets too soft, just refrigerate again. And by the way, if you like making Christmas cookies, please check out the end links where I will be posting a link for my Christmas cakes and desserts and other cookie ideas that you may enjoy. I'd also like to mention that if you make these cookies ahead of time, they can be stored on your counter for three to four days or even up to a week, unless your room is hot. Otherwise, place the cookies into a glass airtight container and store in the fridge for a couple weeks or so. The wonderful things about these cookies is for example, next year you can make them a month or two ahead of time, freeze them, and have them all prepped well before Christmas. But I would freeze them without decorating them. Do that after you thaw the cookies. When you've done all your cutouts and filled your tray, place the tray of cookies back into the fridge for about 30 to 60 minutes. If you don't re-chill, your cookies will spread and you'll have rather portly gingerbread people who obviously are not on a keto diet. As I mentioned earlier, it's really important that the cookie dough is chilled before baking. And a few minutes before you're ready to bake, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. Place your tray of cutout cookies into the middle position of your preheated oven and then bake for 10 to 12 minutes. And don't forget to set your timer. The cookies will look a little bit underdone when you remove them, and that's okay, that's what they're supposed to be like. Just place your tray with all the cookies in it onto a cooling rack and leave them without touching them for about 20 minutes. These cookies are very fragile while they're warm and will crack if you try to move them too soon. Now this is what happens if you're not paying attention and you forget about your cookies or you leave your cookies in the oven for even just two minutes longer. This was a really sad moment for me. They smelled like heaven and they were burnt. Now with a spatula, or if they're cool enough to touch, lift your cookies off the parchment and place it directly onto your wire rack and let them cool down completely to room temperature. If possible, let the cookies cool on the counter overnight. This will give you the best flavor and texture. Now it's finally time to decorate. I tried a little experiment that I thought I'd share with you. For the first few cookies, I used my sugar-free sweetened condensed milk instead of royal icing. And I took my Wilton gel color red, dipped a little toothpick in the color, and swirled the toothpick with the color on it into my sweetened condensed milk. To decorate, I find it much easier to use a very small piping bag, but cut a very small hole in this piping bag so that you can better control how much comes out at any one time. And with a small hole, it's much easier to make the eyes or any of the lines that you want to make. To make a bow tie, I squeeze out a small rectangle and then fill it in with some more icing. However, if you want to flood a larger surface area, as I'm doing for the bodice here, create an outline first and then squeeze and fill in the center, but do not flood with a lot of icing at one time because it's really hard to remove the extra icing. It's always better to start with a little less icing and then add more if you need some. 
and I found that the best tool for making fine details and guiding my icing to where I want it to be is to use a long toothpick. And be creative and decorate your cookies as you would like. For some of the details, I dipped the end of my toothpick into my black gel color to make the eyes look better, and this made the pupils. Although the sweetened condensed milk was okay, for the rest of the gingerbread people, I'm actually going to use my sugar-free royal icing. The link for that will be provided in the description below. So prepare your royal icing and reserve some for whatever color you need. I'm going to use some of this royal icing to make red as I'm doing here. And here's how I decorated my next batch of gingerbread cookie people. The first one I made was my Santa. With the royal icing, I find it much easier to do the fine details such as eyes and buttons and lines by using a toothpick because I have better control of how much icing I'm putting into any one spot. By the way, if you like my video tutorials and recipes, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And please thumbs up and leave a comment or ask a question for any of my videos. And if you find my tutorials and recipes useful, I would greatly appreciate it if you could make a donation to my channel by buying me a coffee. The Kofi link is in the description below. So here's my finished Santa. What do you think? I also made a Frosty the Snowman gingerbread cookie. I made my snowman by first doing an outline and then flooding the interior. Then using my black gel and my red gel food colors, I drew in the details. Now for the next gingerbread man. As you can see, when you're using a toothpick, you can direct the icing and even correct any errors that you make while the icing is still wet. I'm very blessed that my family is very close and I wanted to represent each of us in this diorama. And here's how I made the hearts. First, take your toothpick and get a small drop of the red royal icing and place it in the right position. Then with your toothpick, shape the bottom end into a triangle. Then use the toothpick to round up the top and make a little dip in the center. And that's how easy it is to make a heart. You should note that the monk fruit erythritol royal icing will take a bit longer to dry than sugar-based royal icing. So when you plan to make decorated gingerbread people cookies, it's a really good idea to make them a few days ahead. After you've decorated all your cookies, because of the longer drying time for this royal icing, leave your decorated gingerbread people on the counter and let them air dry for at least 24 hours. Unless your room is really hot, I have found that even though there is no preservative in any of my cookies, these gingerbread cookies lasted really well on my counter for over a week. But of course, you do have to use your judgment and depending on the temperature of your house or the climate you're in, it might be advisable to refrigerate your cookies in an airtight container. I think it would be absolutely heartbreaking to waste these cookies, especially all the work you put into them to make them. Now here's a sample of all the various cookies I made and how I decorated them. I hope you like these gingerbread people. And when you make your cookies, please take a photo and tag me on your Instagram. And most of all, I hope you have as much fun making your sugar-free gingerbread cookie people as I did. Enjoy. To end this video, here are the gingerbread representatives of my family. My husband David, my children, and I would like to wish you and your loved ones a very Merry Christmas.